Uh, Errol, very good morning to you. Yes, good morning. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. You must be feeling pretty happy about life in general. Oh, I am. And I don't know if you remember, man, but four years ago, I did this exact same time slot. Did you? We both, I went to bed with you declaring victory. We were talking about how great things were going to be. This was the very last program I did right. before I went to bed. Yeah. And the circle of life, I'm very, very happy to be back here with you as a victorious um, actually victorious this time. And yes. It feels like it's validating. Everybody's just full of full of joy, as yes. they like to say. And so many people in this country are, are so full of joy as well. The phones are ringing off the hook. You know, we've got voice notes galore. People really, really happy about what's happened. And the thing that I'm surprised about, I suppose, uh, Errol, is because when, when we, we, we did the first three hours, one to four, we left at four in the morning, I was pretty sure that he might have done it. But there were still some caveats. There was still some kind of, you know, Philadelphia could come in massively for Kamala. There could be these big, big moves in Georgia. Some of the biggest cities might have changed and we might just not have counted the right votes yet. But it suddenly moved very quickly then over the next sort of two or three hours. And by suddenly 6.30, um, it was all over. Yeah, it was almost like a, a cartoon snowball gathering, yeah. gathering, gathering, and then, you know, just a total and complete... Uh, capitulation ah. from the other side and we just steamrolled them completely. Yeah. And what do you think um, that's about? Do you think that's about Trump's um, campaign just being a lot more efficient this time around, that they didn't tell people to stay home and not vote until the day of the vote? They actually got the vote out. They actually got the postal vote out. They galvanised young men, you know, um, and, and Kamala Harris's campaign just wasn't up to it. Yeah, I mean, for I would like to take a lot of credit for, for this, but I have to give a lot of credit, honestly, to the Democrat Party for sandbagging Scranton Joe and running Kamala Harris. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, and then making an alliance with Dick Cheney. Right. So, yes, we, we built that ground game. We went in there. We, we, we did voter registration. We, we made sure we had poll watchers so they couldn't cheat. We, we focused our resources, and, and we did very well. We ran a great campaign. But... It really helped that our opponent was Kamala Harris. Yeah. She was the most unelectable person. It was almost like they wanted us to win. Right. I, I can't imagine, in hindsight, why they would have done that. And now we're hearing the Democrats are ready to blame Joe Biden himself for not dropping out of the race sooner, as if they didn't make him do it. Yeah, this poor man, this poor man who won 14, 15 million votes, by the way. And, I mean, I don't think he would have been completely KO'd like Kamala was. Right. And now I guess they're going to go after his legacy. And they, I'm sure they made a deal with him, promised him a library and all this. And, you know, he'll probably get it. But, man, they, they really used that man for every every you know, twist of the mm. of the rag they could to get it out of him, and I kind of feel bad for him. Yeah, well, I'm sure you won't feel bad for too long. You know, don't don't no. don't, 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 don't knock yourself out.